Hey hi everyone, this is Mukesh Shotwani from learn-automation.com. So till now you must have seen me in many of my videos, but I always talk about the automation, right? So till now I have been discussing about web automation, API automation, mobile automation, different RPA tools available in the market. But when you talk about the complete software lifecycle, right? It's not about the testing, it's about the complete cycle. So today I have come up with the idea that I will educate you all about the new DevOps methodology and the industry wide use tools that are adopted in the software development. So before we get started, I want to thank Simply Run for sponsoring this video and I would highly recommend you to watch this channel on YouTube. Recently I gone through a couple of videos and they are amazing. So if you want to upgrade yourself, if you want to upgrade your new skills, check out their channel and you can subscribe to the channel as well. So now let's jump into the tools that I will be explaining in this video which are essential for every DevOps engineers in the market because it enhances the process of designing, creating, deploying and operating the complete software system. According to Glassdoor, DevOps engineers is ranked at second position out of 50 best jobs in USA. Also, Glassdoor says the average annual salary of DevOps engineer is 1,33,378 USD per annum. So before getting started with the concepts and methodologies of DevOps, it is very important you to understand what is DevOps, where it is used and everything. So what exactly is DevOps? It's a collaboration between you know development and the operation teams which actually enables continuous delivery of the application and the services to our end users. Now suppose a person who is completely new to DevOps or a person who is already working in the DevOps but he wants to enhance his skills, it is very tough for him to decide which tools to use in the market. So good news about the tools which I am talking about is all are free. So you don't need to pay a single penny, you can start downloading all the uh, tools which you are discussing and you can implement everything from the scratch. So all the tools which I am talking right now, they are mainly if you are working with Java. So these tools might change if you are working with C Sharp or if you are working with you know Node.js or any other programming language, let's say Python. So these tools which are talking about few are anyways that will be standard and few will change depends on your programming language. So let's say we are talking about Jenkins. So that tool will remain same irrespective of what you know language you are using. So depends on the requirement you can customize this tool. So let me start with the first tool called Git. So if you talk about Git, Git is nothing but a versioning control system. As the name says it is versioning controlling it means you can manage the different version of your code okay so what exactly git does it manages your uh, versions of your code so let's say i am a developer or a tester or anybody who is dealing with the code or any kind of files so if you make any changes git will automatically create a version for you so it will be very easy for you to navigate the different version of your files or the code in case something goes wrong or if you want to roll back you can easily go back with these changes so for every commit git will create a change id for you which will help you to go back and you can update okay so there's so many features of git we have which we will discuss in the video in depth one 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 by one like we have merging we have branching we have rebase and there's so many features of git and uh, we will be discussing about each and every concept in the detailed manner first of all it is free and open source tool it will also enable you to faster your release cycle and it will also allow you to do non-linear development that is the main point here so if you want to learn more about the git then you can check out the tutorials they have covered everything about the git which you need in the devops cycle so the next tool which i want to talk about is maven so maven is a build tool okay so to be more specific i will say build automation tool which will help you to build your application and your manage your application efficiently so Maven actually take care of the complete life cycle of your application because it has different goals in it. So we'll talk about these goals once we move forward. So it will build your application with the small changes. So these tools which we have in the market like Maven, Gradle, all these tools, they come with a pre-packaged XML files with some small changes. You can build your application and you can deploy to the different platforms. So why we have selected Maven? Because it is very easy to set up. It is highly available. And the main interesting point here is the parallel build. You know, so if you have multiple deployments going on, then you can do the parallel deployments using Maven as well. And with the minimal changes, you can implement the new features. So there are so many examples, but I want to take only one example. Let's say you have 
uh, multiple dependencies in your project and you want to make some changes to the previous dependency because of the new features so you can easily update in the XML file and automatically Maven will take care of the dependencies not only with the current dependency and all the previous dependencies also it will take care so if you are interested in learning about Maven then check out the link in the description you will find the video over there so the next tool is Selenium WebDriver so as we already know Selenium is a open source automation tool for web automation but we have different automation tools for different uh, automation like the API mobile that also you can fit into the DevOps pipeline depends on a requirement I'm assuming that you have the web application deployed and you want to test that application so we are using selenium for that particular activity so some of the features of selenium as we already know it is completely open source it's completely free so when you talk about open source it means you can also check out their source code you can build your own version and you can come up with a new library of your own as well apart from that it is a cross platform it means you can work on the linux mac windows or any other operating system currently that's supporting almost all major platforms it is a cross browser support it means you can work on the different browsers as well so you can work with safari i firefox chrome opera and nowadays they also support mobile automation so in case if you want to test your application on android and ios then you just need to add one more library called apm and you can play with the mobile automation as well there are so many reasons to use selenium but these are the points which i just told these are the highly considered point for considering selenium as a test automation tool so if you want to learn more about selenium then check out the tutorials on selenium web driver and you will also find the link in the description so the next set of tool which we are going to talk about is more from the infrastructure side and for the deployment side so the tools which i'm going to talk about is jenkins now jenkins is a ci tool and when we talk about ci it's continuous integration testing right so now Jenkins will take care of the complete lifecycle. DevOps process will be incomplete without any of the CI tool. So we have different CI tools in the market like Team City, Bamboo, Jenkins, but we are taking Jenkins as of now. So Jenkins will take care of the three different phases. Okay, you can build your application, you can test your application, and you can manage your application as well via Jenkins. So why only Jenkins? Because we have different tools in the market, then why only Jenkins? First of all, it's free. If you talk about other CI tools in the market like Team City or other tools, they are paid. They also have community version, but again, they are limited. But Jenkins is a complete free tool. You can download and you can start using it. Second interesting point about Jenkins is the number of plugins which they have provided. So in Jenkins, everything is coming as a plugin. So you don't need to code much. Download the plugin, install it, and you can use it as a plugin. So all the functionalities which they have they are moreover kind of plugins. Third interesting point is the pipeline. Jenkins provide you, you know, very beautiful pipeline where you can create your complete lifecycle in a form of pipeline where you can create an application, build your application, deploy and finally test. So if you want to learn more about Jenkins, then check out this video or you can find the link in the description as well. Okay, so the next tool which we are going to talk about is Docker. Now Docker and Kubernetes have changed the complete DevOps industry and these two tools have gained maximum popularity in last couple of years so now before jumping into the technical part let me talk about what exactly is docker okay so docker is nothing but a container technology it will give you your platform as a container so you don't need the virtual machine to run your application you can easily get the runtime containers and you can use it so when we talk about the devops Docker plays a very important role in the DevOps lifecycle. So we will be talking about Docker in detail, but these are the major features which Docker has and that's why we have shortlisted this tool as part of the DevOps process. Some of the important features of Docker are, first of all, it's easily portable across different platform. You can run your application in isolation. When I say isolation, you, you can run your application in the different containers. They can easily talk to each other but all the application will be running the different containers high scalability and the efficiency and you can also attach the data volumes okay and it can be reused easily for more information and tutorials about docker you can check out this video or you can get the video link in the description as well so the next tool which we are going to talk about is the ansible 
Now, before jumping into the technical definition, let's talk about a normal usage why we need Ansible. Now, let's assume that you have three different systems and each system you need to install Java. So now, if you want to talk about manual process, you will go to each system, you will install Java, and you go to second system and third system. So this process looks easy when you have three, four system, but consider the scenario you have thousand systems and these systems you have to install the exact same process or the softwares or the application or it can be XYZ. So managing large number of you know systems is not easy when you do manually. So this is just one of the example where Ansible can be used. So using Ansible, you can install the different Java versions or different applications or it can be any tools remotely you can install in these systems and you can handle these kind of things virtually. So Ansible works on the playbooks. So they have some YAML file and with the help of these YAML files, you can play with the Ansible. So that is what uh, the overview. Now let's jump into the exact definition. What is Ansible? So Ansible is an open source software that provides the configuration management, IT information and the task automation. So these are the high level features for Ansible are high scalability, rapid automation and very easy to use. So if you want to learn more about Ansible, then check out this playlist which has covered everything about Ansible. So the last tool of this particular video is Nagios. So Nagios is an open source tool which is mainly used for the monitoring purpose. So when you talk about monitoring, it's not only for one thing or maybe for systems. You can monitor systems, servers, networks, infrastructures, protocols. It is mainly for monitoring of anything which is attached to it. So let's take one example. You have a system which is up and running, right? Now you want to monitor the system. You cannot monitor 24 by 7 with yourself. You need one tool which will automatically give you some kind of calls, alerts or something that this system is going down. You need this kind of monitoring not only for system, you need for everything. So let's say I have, I'm giving three services to the customer and one service is going down. So I have to immediately take the action that how can I, you know, again do some activity and it should again go in an upper stage or it should be in a running stage. So this can be done if I monitor these kind of, you know, services through a kind of a tool. So we are going to use Nagios, which will take care of this kind of monitoring. So there are a couple of features for Nagios, which is comprehensive monitoring, problem remediation, modular architecture, high availability and very easy to use as well. To learn more about Nagios, you can check out the link in the description. So I would like to say thank you to Simply Learn for sponsoring this video. And if you want to learn more about Simply Learn, then check out the link in the description. If you think anything which we missed or you want us to cover in the next video, let us know in the comment section. We will be happy to assist you. If you like this video, share with your friends, subscribe to this channel and we will see you in the next video.